This is the Level Up Podcast. I'm Taylor Petrinovich. And I'm Kelly Gilster of 618 Studios. And we are on a mission to help wedding filmmakers and photographers level up their businesses so you can make more and work less. We want to help you confidently take your business from mainstream to luxury, and it all starts right here. And welcome to another episode of the Level Up Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor Petrinovich, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Kelly Gilster. Hello, everybody. Taylor, how are you? I am great. Um, Kelly and I are twinning today, and it is completely unplanned. If you're watching on YouTube, you will see that we are literally wearing the exact same sweater. <laughs> I think also the background of our podcast is kind of funny too because it's like my house is very like beige neutral and then I'm wearing this like sad beige sweater and then Taylor's in front of this like white wall with like also another sad beige sweater. So we're just like really in our neutral element this morning. Yes, neutral is everything. I've been trying to embrace the pops of color a little bit more, but okay, this is a totally a tangent. Have you ever heard of like the color science of what colors you look best in? I was just going to bring that up. Yes, I'm so amazed by it. I get like, I see TikToks about it and all this stuff and I want to do it. Yeah, so I did. Um, I got totally roped in by somebody on TikTok. It was like a hundred bucks, which I thought was fine. And it was done virtually. And I am a true, no, I'm a dark autumn. So then they send you like the color palette that you look best in um, and colors to avoid. And the one that I did was like also included like shades of denim and um, kinds of metals and I don't know, all these things. And so um, if you are in <laughs> in the market for upgrading your wardrobe and looking your very best, then um, looking up some of this like color science stuff is kind of interesting, but beige was one of my colors. So, um, long story short. Yeah, I know. I've seen also, I didn't even realize it included like jewelry and stuff, but I saw one girl that was the, um, specialist had said, Oh, you're definitely like a silver person. And she's like, no, all of my jewelry is gold. Um, (laughs) it's so fascinating. I love like a specialist coming in and telling you, like what you really need to do. And also that would be great too if you're like in the need of some new headshots. Maybe that's like a good investment to do um, so that you're choosing colors that are like more appropriately make you look your best and like really great for your skin tone. Yeah, 100% agree. Um, I think that'd be so, so smart. And if you were really wanting to go all in, you could get rid of everything in your closet that wasn't in alignment with um, the color science that you're given, which is kind of related to today's episode. Yes. So today's episode is what we have called it and what we're going to be talking about, which is burning the boat. Um, This is a common phrase that I've actually heard on other podcasts, either through motivational speakers or various coaches. Um, This idea of showing up in your business and basically pulling the training wheels, um, you know, removing the net from the trapeze, whatever it might be, but basically like pulling that safety net from your business um, to allow for further growth and almost like a, how do I want to phrase this? Almost like a warrior mentality for your business. What do you think, Taylor? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was actually just thinking too, I've heard the phrase um, building the parachute on the way down be used too, just like go for it and figure it out along the way. Um, That way you have no option but to make it work. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. It's, um, I think that it's so important because, you know, I'm going to bring some examples into this, into the episode. And maybe one of these examples really relates to your specific um, time of life or what things might look like for you. But I know that Paul always kind of says, And I think maybe a lot of us experienced this through COVID as well. That was a really hard time for photographers and videographers as business owners. And when you are put in a trial, like you, you just have to make it work. You're just going like all in to like save your business and make it like stay afloat, right? Um, I know for Paul and I, that was like a pretty scary time. We had to get crafty with like, 
figuring out different payment plans for clients to stay afloat and cover our expenses. And then also it really forced us to lean more into um, building out our commercial brand, um, which was great. We, we kind of were so run by our weddings and we kind of joined the commercial brand with the weddings. And then when the weddings went away, we were like, well, we got to kind of like partially burn the boat on weddings right now and go all in on commercial and just kind of like make it work. Um, Taylor, can you kind of tell me about a time when you essentially burned the boat in your business? Yeah. So, um, for me, I, I kind of consider it as like a moment of no return, right? Like you have now gone in a different direction and you have to fully commit with no real opportunity for like turning back and going back to your old, old ways. So um, it was actually a conversation I've had with a few different filmmakers. Um, the first one was Deanna Harrison of Harrison Films. And then at a separate time, um, where the Hugo's, um, Hugo film co. And we were talking about pricing. This is like not on the podcast. This is just like as friends, just chatting about pricing. And this is when I was starting to get into charging, um, above 10,000, but that wasn't my minimum by any means. Um, at that point, that was just like something that was happening, you know, here and there. And I want to say this is like two years ago. So wait, no. Yeah. Two years ago. So like 2022. And at that time I was starting at, I don't know, maybe like 64 or 6,500, which I mean is great, especially for like my local market. Like I was definitely at the top of like the market in Sacramento. Um, and I was talking to them and I can't remember which one it was, whether it was Harrison Films or Hugo. Um, and they were like, you start at 6,400 Taylor, you need, <laughs> come on, like at least start at 10,000, like just do it. Um, and so I honestly, like I take people's advice to heart, especially people who I trust in the industry and people's whose businesses I, um, admire. And so I just said, okay, fine. Like I will. So like literally that week I went in, I updated all of my, you know, investment guides updated on my website where it said like my starting price, all these things. I reached out to, whatever the two dozen planners I had worked with or had been inquired, you know, with before. And I kind of like unveiled this new pricing. And to me, that was like, there's no turning back. Like when you publicly announce something like that and send all these personalized emails, um, to me, that's burning the boat of the old pricing. And it forced me to learn and adapt a lot faster than I would have. I think that so many times we have these goals or these ambitions or things we are really hoping for, but unless you're taking like action on purpose, that's all it is. It's just kind of a hope. You need to burn the boat in order to get out of the dreaming mode and get into the doing mode. And there's so many resources and so many avenues you can take in order to make those dreams become a reality. But in my experience, and I think that in so many others' experiences too, like by burning that boat and by building the parachute on the way down, it really forced those actions instead of like waiting for the perfect opportunity or waiting to have all the time that I wanted or, you know, waiting for whatever it was whatever excuse like you're kind of making for yourself, because that's kind of what it is. It's just kind of an excuse. Um, it kind of negates all of those things and forces you to do. Yes, and it worked absolutely. Out. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so happy to hear that story too. Like a big, big price point is, or big, big price jump is definitely something that I feel like um, is a burning of the boat. And especially, like you said, when you publicly announce it and there's no going back, um, you've just gone all in. And I even like on a very small scale of burning the boat, a lot of times um, when say a client comes into my inbox and they're asking like when their film is going to be ready, I'll like give them like a small, small window range of like, because I feel like we all kind of get right when people it's right before the holidays and they're like, oh, are we going to get our stuff before Christmas? Like I could definitely like make excuses and just kind of say like, yeah, we'll see kind of what, whatever. But if I'm like, yes, it's going to be to you before Christmas. Like I'm burning the boat on any, like any future, um, excuses that I might have, like it's going to get to them. And so by you telling those planners that you had relationships or other vendors being notified of what your new pricing is, that's essentially you saying, 
I'm burning the boat on my $6,500 starting price and I'm now starting in five figures and you're just entering it with so much confidence. Um, We just last week um, hosted our Road to Luxury workshop series where we coached hundreds of filmmakers and photographers over three days. It was such an amazing, incredible experience. So many minds blown, so many things. And I just think that like, so many people now have this new vision of what their business could be. And the saddest thing for me is knowing that there's going to be hundreds of people also who may say, well, I'm just not ready to burn the boat yet. And my question to you is why? Like, why aren't you ready? What kind of maybe self-sabotage thoughts are you having for yourself or, you know, that's really going to sabotage the growth of your business? Um But there are lots and lots of people that have already decided like, yes, I'm burning the boat. I'm going all in. I'm, I'm, you know, I've steered this ship now and I'm headed towards this island of the luxury and premier market and I'm ready to burn the boat and do away with um, past business strategies that didn't serve me, a market that I've just outgrown, honestly. And so if that's you guys, um, I would really encourage you to, you know, because you're a listener of this podcast, I know that you really want your business to reach its fullest potential. And that's what Taylor and I want for you too. Um, And so, The doors are closing tomorrow on our mastermind program this spring, and we would love to see you inside. We're really excited about the group of filmmakers and photographers that we've already um, had join our program this spring, and it's just going to be a really good one. Yeah. No, I'm so excited. Um, Minds minds are blown. Boats are being burned left and right, and... I'm so excited to take this journey with another group of filmmakers and photographers this spring. Um, We start on April 2nd, so that's just a few weeks away. So excited to get get going with these people. And um, I have to say it it's nearly sold out. There's only a few spots left. So if you want in on this, I mean, we've spent the last several weeks bringing on past mastermind students um, to kind of paint a picture of what their businesses look like now that they're on the other side of mastermind and give their testimony. And if any of that's resonated with you, we would love to invite you um, inside to claim one of those last remaining spots. You can do that at thelevelupco.com forward slash the luxury framework and learn more about it and save your seat there. Um, Kelly, really quickly, We've been talking about this phrase of burning the boat so much. And actually, I know that there's some history behind this that some people might not be familiar with. Can you um, be our little storyteller and tell people the history behind this phrase? Yes. So um, I was looking it up because, as I mentioned, a lot of coaches and I've heard this phrase and I just love this phrase because it's just so good. It's so inspiring to me. And so um, basically I was looking back on the history of it and it was 2000 years ago. um, Julius Caesar famously said, if you want to take the island, burn the boats. And so essentially what was happening was they showed up to conquer this island. His crew was getting a little bit nervous. They were already starting to take refuge back to the boats. And he was like, no, we are burning the boats here and now. Our only option is to succeed and take over this island. It was like, and also it was such a power play for their enemies, like who they were going up against to be like, dude, they mean business. They're burning these boats. They are not leaving until like either like they have conquered or just gone, been completely defeated. And of course we want you to conquer in your business, of course. And that's what takes a really great strategy and um, a total framework to follow um, that yields in results. And that's what Taylor and I's heart is here at the Level Up Co is to, you know, equip you with that for success. And, and so it really just kind of, because they burned the boats, it just really transformed the mindset of, that entire crew because they were like, okay, we're going all in. We're not like dipping our toe in the water. We're not going to go fight a bit. And then we're going to run back to take refuge in our boats and essentially maybe leave and be defeated in that way. And I just love it because in business, like we as entrepreneurs, we go through a lot, a lot of highs. I once heard that an entre- being an entrepreneur and being a business owner truly allows you to experience the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Whereas someone who may be like an employee that works for somebody, your journey in your career may be a little bit, not flatlined, but like 
you're really not going to experience like those high, high highs that an entrepreneur is or the low and the lows. And that may be scary for you, but I actually think it's really exciting. Um, so anyways, I just feel like there are times where we've had some lows by burning the boats. And then there's other times where we've had really, really great highs by burning the boats. And I want those that are listening to experience those highs as well. Yeah. I think that's also the power of a few things. Um, number one is like investing in your business. I don't like, I can't tell you how many free workshops, free podcasts, free TikToks, blah, 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 where like I just consume all this content, but because it's free, like I don't really feel like any sense of ca- accountability. Like I'm like, that was great, but like, I'm not going to lose out if I don't apply that. So then I just like laziness kind of takes over and then I just don't. But I have found because I I'm a um, you know, I'm a buyer of all the things like I like to buy courses and I like to join things and have mentorships and all these things. And I do find that when I'm paying for something, I lean in a little closer. I listen more intently. I I make it count. Um, And That is like a strategy that I've implemented in my own business to force myself to take action. Um, And I have seen um, that that can be the difference between many business owners who really soar and they really, really succeed and excel in this industry um, versus those who kind of stay stagnant for a long time. It's that 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 leap of investment and investing in yourself so that you feel so much more inclined and inspired and a sense of like almost urgency to act on what you're being taught because of this, um, this stake that you have in the piece of information that you're consuming, but also having a community. Um, like I had mentioned that my burning the boat moment was, um, centered a lot, a lot around relationships, like those planners or whoever I was reaching out to. Right. And it's almost like they didn't know it, but their role in that was holding me accountable to my actions. And that's what we have created with our mastermind as well is, you know, we're a small group of filmmakers and photographers all on the same mission and the power of account accountability. If you've never had like accountability buddy for any other area of your life, then you probably don't know the power of it. But when you have somebody like checking in on you that you can check in with, um, you really are more likely to stay the course of action that you set out on. Um, because we're not going to sugarcoat it. Like it's a lot of work. Like, of course it is, but anything that's worth having in this life is going to be a lot of work. Yeah, that's so, so true. Paul's going to hate me for telling this story because it's like a time of his life that he's not super proud of. But I was talking to him about, um, you know, us doing this podcast episode coming up and the burning of the boats. And and he was like, that really brings me back to my very first year of college. Um, he was going to a community college so that he could transfer to a four-year. And his first year of of community college, his parents were paying for his, um, his parents were like funding his education at the time. And he did not take it seriously. He was going to movie. He was skipping classes. He was going to movies with his friends, going out to lunches. I think a few times they even went golfing or bowling or something like that. He like, Sl- he, I think he like almost failed out of all of his classes. <laughs> and so I'm sorry, Paul, for telling this story, but It's very true. And so his parents sat him aside or took him aside and sat him down and said, hey, like you have my focus is being so funny right now. If you're watching on YouTube. Sorry about that. Um, They said, hey, we can't um, we can't continue to support you in paying for your education because you're not taking it seriously. And so he started having to pay for it himself and his grades like He went from like a D and F student to like an A and B student. And that's when he really took action and took it seriously. And and that's what he needed. So same concept for you, Taylor, of like you can consume all these free things or be given all of this, like, you know, these great resources that are free. But like, are you really, really implementing it in your business or are you just kind of like wavering along on this, you know, winding road? Or now, you know, because you really invested in your business, like Paul had to invest in himself and his own education and he took it seriously. Um, So, yeah, I just thought that was like a funny little story that came to my mind and he brought it up, too. So if I guess if he brought it up, he was like, it could be talked about on the podcast. (laughs) 
I say it's fair game. I think he kind of wanted us to talk about it on the podcast. He gave us some content to work with. But <laughs> I think even in our own business, Paul and I, I've shared a little bit about my story on post, past podcast episodes. And we were essentially kind of forced into going full time um, before then, before I really thought we were ready, I was still nannying for a family. I was a nanny for a family, um, full time and summer rolled around and they're like, we're not going to need you for the summer. We're kind of going to take like a different route and do like lots of camps and things like that. And so we had enough looking at us ahead at our schedule. We had enough to get us through, like, I think they told, let us, let me know in June and they said, okay, in July, August, September, October, everything looked good. So I'm like, okay. Paul was like, you know what? Why don't you just like work full time on the business this summer and we'll just see how it goes. And I really, I don't know if I was, it kind of was burning the boat for, forced into it. Um, but I just never went back. And then Paul was a server at a restaurant. Um, he was a server at Red Robin. And so my like step away and step into full time happened in June of 2011. And then his happened in September of 2011. And basically it was like, he needed all these weekends off for all these weddings we had in September and October. And they were like, Oh, like we're going to have to like kind of put you on like hold on, like you're not really going to be an employee. Like your spot is still there if you want to come back, but like we can't keep you on like salary by giving you like all these weekends off. And so he's like, okay. So I'm like, all right, let's see how this goes too. And so we just went full time in and, and there's been other area, there's been other times, you know, once you like this concept of burning the boat, it's not just something that you're going to do once. It's like, you're going to burn multiple boats over the course of your business. Um, and of course, for Paul and I, 14 years in, we've burned the boat many times. Um, maybe it was another time was a new season that we were in when we had kids. And I remember for the longest time, I was like really holding on the fact that I didn't want to like pay for childcare. Like I'm like, it's so expensive. I can get this done during nap times. Like Paul and I can really split our time. We're like, I take the mornings from nine to one. And then, you know, our son goes down for a nap. And then Paul's like, okay, and then I'll take from like, one to five and we tried to like play this dance for like a good amount of time and it just like wasn't working honestly we were just that was another time where like we got to burn the boat we have to hire like some child care and honestly our business just exploded in things because we weren't spreading ourselves too thin on that i think that's another thing to kind of consider too is like where you are in your season of life and like if you do have young kids like looking for areas where you know, you can help alleviate, you know, maybe a few hours a week. It doesn't have to be full time. Um, but like, think about how much more your business could grow because of like other investments that you're making in to allow for it to grow. So of course, like childcare is an investment. Like even Taylor and I last year, we had like a moment where we're like, okay, we have these two little ones, you know, a year old and they both weren't in any sort of like childcare program. And we both kind of had like, a, OK, it's time to like put them in so we can devote more time to level up and to our mm -hmm. own businesses, too. Yeah, that was a big decision, but I think it's paid off so much. Um, I feel like definitely a happier, calmer version of myself who's getting a lot more done and a better mom in return um, also. So, yeah, all the good things. Um, this has been so good. I this is like. I love motivational speakers. I love a good TED talk. I love all things like pick them up by the bootstraps and <laughs> give me some fuel for my fire kind of thing. Um, and we hope that this has done that for you guys too. And again, tomorrow the doors close to our spring mastermind. And we are so excited to welcome in um, our new kind of cohort of students. And we would love to have you join us. Again, there's a few spots left. So if you want to hop in, please do burn the boat with us. You can find that at thelevelupco.com forward slash the luxury framework. And I know that's a long URL, so it will be linked in the show notes or in the description box below if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, we would absolutely love to see you inside. It's been amazing to see how much the lives and businesses of past students have been transformed. And if we didn't truly believe in this program, Taylor and I wouldn't be doing this. We spend 
probably more time on this than we do on our actual wedding filmmaking businesses at this point. And it's it's a tried and true framework that truly works. Um, and we just hope that 2024 is the year that you do burn the boat with us and go all in on allowing your business to be become its fullest potential and really, really conquer you know, this next market that you want to get into and take charge of essentially your life. And um, also, I just wanted to say too, some exciting things that we have coming up is we have a brand new series that we're going to be starting on the podcast called our All-Star Series. We have an incredible lineup of photographers, filmmakers, planners um, that are all going to be coming on and we're going to be kind of batching them all together in the upcoming months ahead for our All-Star Series. So we hope that you will really enjoy this one. We're really excited to just bring on people that have in these incredible businesses, share a little bit more about their stories and learn about the strategy that they used and implemented to be able to get there. And so again, doors close tomorrow on Luxury Filmmaker Framework and don't miss out on this one, guys. We really hope that we'll see you there. Thank you for joining us in today's conversation. Please help us reach more filmmakers and photographers like you by taking a screenshot and sharing it to social media. And don't forget to tag us at The Level Up Co. And join us again next week, same time, same place, as we continue to level up the industry together. 